Hey YouTube, this is Dion, the Crazy Troll Nation of YouTube. We're not doing chapsticks. I have a Fenty Stunner from a look that I did earlier today. This is like my fourth video today, I think. I am done, y'all. I'm tired. But I know I look good today. I look good every fucking day. But I'm really digging this eye look, and so I'm like, I'm going to keep knocking out videos for Vlogmas. And I'm probably going to regret it in a way because that editing is going to take me days. But since I'm doing videos today, as I said, I think this is my fourth one. <sighs> I'll edit one later, another one tomorrow, another one another day, blah, 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 blah. But I am making it through Vlogmas. So if you want to say it's cheating because I'm doing multiple videos in a day, you can say that. Work smarter, not harder. But anyway, editing. This video is about makeup aesthetics, preferences, popular opinions. These are my unpopular opinions about makeup. And I'm going to explain. They say, if you do a bold eye, do a soft lip. If you do a bold lip, do a soft eye. So do whatever the fuck you want to do. Even though you might say this lip color is not bold, it's still not a soft, like, natural looking lip either. So I have a bold eye, and to me, this is like a semi-bold lip. It's a colorful lip, put it that way. So you can do color on your eye, you can do color on your lip if you want to. If that's what you want to do, go for it. And I love that it seems over the last few months, I've been seeing more women and men my age, and also non-binary, around my age or my age and older, who are doing looks like this, colorful eye looks with a bold lip. And I'm just like, where were y'all years ago when everybody says, you can't use color after 40? And the people who, do looks like this, like the bold eye, but then they still do a soft lip. They're like in their, oh my gosh, they're like, they're like, I don't want to say whining, but it's like, oh my gosh, I'll be 34 this year. And I'm like, bitch, I'm 51. Then get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and if you're that age, and I'm not talking about you in particular, not you, not you who are watching. I'm talking about the other ones who ain't watching. <laughs> but I'm just like, your life is not over because you're in your mid-30s. But those were the ones I was seeing doing bold eyes are people who are in like their late 20s, mid 30s. And so to see people my age, like in their 40s and 50s and 60s, doing like colorful looks, oh my goodness. And I'm seeing more and more of them, thanks to Instagram, I believe. Um, and then we end up following each other on Instagram and then, you know, looking at each other's YouTube videos and subscribing to each other. And it is just amazing because it, sh it showed me, excuse me, that I'm not the only one who thinks you can wear color when you're over a certain age. I love it. But I do like a, a natural, neutral cheek area, though, because I do think that would be clownish if I had on like a bright pink blush with this going on and then the lip. And so I do like my base my foundation and my blush and highlight contour whatever i don't have on contour or bronzer today but i do like for that part to be softer because i like this right here and i like a bold lip i love me with a colorful eye dark eye and i love me with a dark lip that's my aesthetic and or grungy with a dark lip that's my aesthetic that's what i prefer myself in as well as neutral mixed with warm tones because of my undertone but anyway i'm digressing the next thing unpopular opinion you need to wear lashes i have notes of course because I'm, I'm exhausted <laughs> you need to wear lashes to complete your eye look if you've seen my other videos you understand the concept of me saying this is the crazy troll nation Accept your features, enhance them if you want to, that's fine. I love the plain face paint. Like this right here is, is not like my natural look. <laughs> my eyelids are not blue and my lips are not this dark. But anyway, if you want your eyelashes to flutter up to your hairline, that's fine. But to me, <laughs> I'm thinking about an episode of Flavor of Love. This was years and years ago. Not much sticks with me, but this stuck with me because it was just so fucking ridiculous. Um, New York was on the show and they were on a boat, her and Flava and some other women. And <laughs> her lashes were the floor. <laughs> Cause they were on the 
fucking boat going somewhere. And she's like, <laughs> you can see <laughs> I can't even say it. And I'm like, bitch, just take them damn things off. <laughs> and of course the camera like zoomed in. <laughs> I am delirious. Woo. I'm like, bitch, just take them shits off. <laughs> And that was years and years and years ago. I don't think you need lashes. <laughs> My eyes just, I'm crying. I'm laughing so hard. I'm starting to cry. Um, the looks with lashes that I do like are the ones where the lashes look like they could possibly be your natural lashes. Not the real thick ones that are coming up to here. Because for me, it's like, okay, if I'm looking at an eye look and they're looking at you and they're like, isn't this gorgeous? All I see are lashes up to here. The only time I see the lid color is when they blink or look down. So for me, it just covers up like, okay, you've done all of this wonderful work that I can't see unless you go like this or you look down. So to me, it takes away from the look unless you want to surprise somebody. So you have one of these long, thick lashes. And when you blink, it's like, oh, that's cute. Where'd it go? You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I don't want to keep laughing because I feel my eyes tearing like I'm about to cry from laughing so hard but you do not need lashes to complete a look you don't even need mascara to complete the look to be honest with you I use mascara because it gets the eyeshadow out of my lashes <laughs> and I never curl my lashes they say you have to curl your lashes and then you have to curl them this way you squeeze it you move it up squeeze it move it up hold it for three seconds and then you put on the mascara I'm just like yo look mm -mm. So there's times I don't even wear mascara because this is just like, it's just another step. Because this right here, I like how this eye look looks. Who cares if your lashes is curled? Who cares if, you know, they're <laughs> flirting on a windy day? <laughs> you don't need lashes to complete a look, my unpopular opinion. Oh my gosh. You see my eyes all watery. Oh, I'm laughing too much. I need a nap. Unpopular opinion, you do not need to do a brow bone highlight or a brow arch highlight. I think it may, for me, it has to do with the shape of my eye. If I put, and I know your brow arch color, the concept is that you put it right here where the arch is, where some people they do, they highlight this entire area. And that looks nice too, but I think it depends on your eye shape. And because I have all of this puffiness, if I put a color here, that's just going to highlight all of this extra space that I have. So if anything, like I did with this look, I took a shade that was, you can see it here, this yellow mustardy shade. That's this shade all the way through here. And I started in a corner, which is why it looks darker in the corner. And so I will use a shade very similar to my skin tone and I'll start in the corner and then blend it over and so I just let that be my brow highlight there are times though where I do take a sparkly shade like this can you really see it like this shade that I use for my tear duct area there are times that I will put it up here in the arch area but then sometimes not with the look I did today I didn't feel like I needed to have like a, a little disco ball spot right there so it depends on the look that you're going for um but I don't think you need to have a brow arch highlight to complete your look. And again, maybe it has to do with your eye shape. Because I know people who would take this blue all the way up to their brow bone and all the way into their inner corner. It depends on your aesthetic. It depends on what you like. It depends on what you think looks good on you. And that's what matters is you being happy with whatever you're doing to your face. Oh, I already talked about bold eye and a bold lip. Color over 50. Okay, here's a very unpopular opinion. It may be because I know different types of people. Unpopular opinion. Appropriate makeup. Work appropriate makeup. Bridal makeup. Daytime look. Nighttime look. Holiday look. Going out with the husband. Romantic look. My unpopular opinion is a look is a look. If you like it, wear it. If you like it, I love it for you. And I'm saying this because I know people who are goth. When they got married, they had on black wing liner, a bold black lip. 
that was appropriate for them because that's their aesthetic. That's who they are. So how would I say, oh, you need to have like soft pinks and pastels and, you know, a, a shimmery lip and that wouldn't be appropriate for them. And so I'm like, what are you talking about? Like that's bridal makeup is not the same for every single person. Corporate office. When I did therapy, I worked in an office. I was wearing stuff like this to work. Who makes the rules at the office? It definitely isn't the women. Or are we just trying to appear to be aesthetically pleasing to our male co-workers? And if so, who gives a fuck what they think? Because most of them are married anyway. Unless you're trying to get a date. And workplace romance, uh, I don't know about that. That's too close. <laughs> if something happened and I still got to look at you every day. Um, did I just snort? <laughs> I think I did. I'm sorry. I'm so rude. Yo, I'm delirious fourth video today i think it's the fourth one today at least the fourth one today but it's whatever your aesthetic is just wear it and rock it and be confident with it when i first started wearing makeup back in 20 i keep wanting to say like 2021 i keep wanting to say like 2006 but in 2006 when i started wearing makeup you know i'm trying to do what everybody's saying do this do this and that and some, some I liked and some I didn't. And I kept trying to make myself fit into what the beauty community was saying. And then after years and years, I'm just like, fuck that. Like, I like this better. And when I would wear stuff like this, people would be like, that looks really pretty. And when I would wear the softer stuff, they're like, I like what you wore yesterday better. This will be what I had on yesterday. You see what I'm saying? And so even other people, I guess they can kind of pick up on what your aesthetic is or what looks best on you according to your skin tone and also your undertone and it may have to do also with your personality too like I really don't know and sometimes now if I do a soft look like if I'm experimenting with a new palette I'll ask a friend of mine how does this look she's like it looks nice but it don't look like you and I'm like damn but when I wear this she's like yeah that's you that that's you right there that looks good and so <laughs> is this work appropriate how the fuck yeah it was work appropriate for me, nobody told me, oh, you need to tone down your eyeshadow. Bitch, please. Anyway, day look, nighttime look. For me, a look is a look. I've been out in the daytime. Like I said, I used to work with looks like this. And so I'm out all day working. And then after work, you're running errands. You're in and out of stores. Daytime. Nighttime, freshen up my lip. <laughs> Holiday. Holiday, I usually kind of just do a base face because I'm just too lazy. And so I don't even, <laughs> I don't even really have a holiday look. And chances are, if I do an eyeshadow look, it'll be a soft one just because it's easier. Like this takes time, the blending, color placement, back and forth, you know, mixing, blending, all of that. Where a softer look, where it all just kind of looks monochrome, monochromatic, excuse me. I can just slap that on and be out the door in 10 minutes. And so that's what I would usually do. I do a quick, quick holiday dinner and I would put on a lip gloss because I'm going to be eating and drinking. And so whatever lip you put on is going to come off anyway. So it's kind of like now that I'm hearing myself say this, my holiday looks are kind of just slap something on and be out the door <laughs> and not really try to look like a cute ass troll, even though I'm a cute ass troll without face paint on. But so you get my point. I was going to say something else and I forgot real quick. Did y'all hear that? Sorry about that if you did. Another thing, really quick. I do change up sometimes how I do my makeup. What you will see a lot is, and this is how I learned, because I learned how to do makeup from YouTube, no lie. Do your transition shade, which is like your skin tone shade, or just you know one shade darker than your skin tone. So you put that down. Then you take a shade, a couple shades darker than that one, and you put that directly into your crease, and then you blend that out. And then you put on a shimmery, and those two are matte shades. Your transition shade and your crease shade are matte shades. Then you take a shimmery shade, and you put that on your lid. Then you take a really sparkly glitter shade, and you put that on your inner corner and your brow bone highlight. Tell me that that's not the norm. And so I did that for a long time and then sometimes it felt right and sometimes it didn't. And what I found is because I have puffiness, like here's my crease right here. When I relax my eye, where my crease go? <laughs> and so what I found was doing my transition, doing the crease shade, 
and then putting on the lid shades, my lid shades were not adhering to my lids the way I wanted them to because the transition shade was coming down onto my lid. The crease shade was coming down onto my lid. And so my lid shade didn't have anything to stick to because it was already shadow on my lid. And if you want a perfect example of what I'm saying, look at people who do cut crease videos. They do their transition, they do their crease, and then what do they do? They either take a primer or glitter glue or concealer and they put that all across their lid because it gives the eyeshadow something to stick to. So instead of that, put on my eyeshadow primer and put my lid colors on first. And then I don't need to do that extra step. There are times I did experiment with putting on additional primer to put on a topper shade on top of shadow that was there, but that's not something I typically do. And so just really think about and really pay attention when you're watching videos why they're doing what they're doing. Cause I'm like, why do you need to put on extra primer to put on a lid color? Oh, because when you did your transition and crease, that covered up most of your lid as well. Watch, you'll see what I'm saying. I lied to you not. And you'll, you'll see it and then you'll be like, that's what Dion was talking about. Like, yeah, she was right. And so I started doing my lid shades first. Natasha Denona's videos, she starts with her outer corner, she packs it on, blends it out, and then she works in. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I'll start in a corner. Like today's a look. If you go back and watch that video. Did I say today was December 7th? I don't remember. I did my inner corner first. I did the center lid. Then I did the outer corner. And then I think I did my transition. And then I did my outer V. For me, lid colors stick better directly over the primer. And also I've learned because of my eye shape to take my lid colors up into the crease and also the transition area. So as, again, here's my crease, which is where your socket is. When I look at you, the crease is gone. All you see is this puffiness up here. And this is my transition area. When I relax my eye, that color is right here. And so that's why I take my lid colors up to the crease and my transition shade is actually above well, this would be the transition area above the crease. And so that's why I do my eyeshadow the way that I do. And so it's, it's about what your eye shape is. If my eyes were like this, meaning not puffy, and this is how they naturally looked, this would be considered still either a standard eye shape or a deep set. Deep set, they can go in and put a crease color. And because of the fluffiness, I almost said that messed up, of the brush, it'll go into the crease and slightly like up here into this area and then they'll take their transition shade higher up so it depends on your eye shape so if you're doing your eyeshadow and something's not blending right or you know you're doing your lid colors and then you look up and it's like where did it go experiment with different ways and different techniques of applying your makeup either do the order different do your inner corner lid outer corner then transition Try taking your your excuse me. Try taking your lid colors up into the crease if you have hooded or puffy eyes like I do, or just if you want to still do your transition and crease first, take your transition up higher and take your crease a little bit lower, which is still your transition area, and still take your lid colors up higher and experiment with, you know, that aspect of it. Start from inner corner workout or work from outer corner and go in, and. Sometimes it may look weird because people that do like really bold makeups, Tammy is one of them, Annette's Makeup Corner is another one, Butte Bean is another one. They they still do their transition shades first, but they'll use like a fuchsia, a dark purple, a blue, and it's just like, that shit look crazy as hell. But once they finish everything, I'm like, that shit is really beautiful. <laughs> And so as they say, trust the process. And so I'm just saying for that part, and I know this could have been like a whole video on its own about eyeshadow placement and how to put it to where you like it. Um, but just experiment. Because sometimes I still do outer corner in, sometimes I do inner corner out, but I still tend to do my transition and crease shades last because I want all of this lid shade color to show up. That's it for this video. Let me know what your thoughts are on bold lip and a bold eye. 
can you or can you not? You feel like you need to wear lashes. You feel like you need to do brow bone highlight. You feel like you need to have work appropriate looks or bridal makeup or whatever. I am not a fucking robot. I'm tripping. I'm going to go. Thank you for watching. But let me know your thoughts below. Like, seriously, because sometimes I'm thinking, like, am I the only one that thinks these things? Like, that was a weird ass face. My lips just went. <laughs> Go to go. Thank you for watching. And you will see me in the next video. And I promise you, it will not still be December 7th. <laughs> and happy Vlogmas to you who are doing this. This is a lot of fucking work. So thank you. And I appreciate you watching and commenting. And you will see me. <laughs>